leaving the shores of Lake Lagrange, the last stop on our trip there and back again are the slopes of expectation. In this video, we are looking at stochastic gradient estimation. And most of the material we are covering today is from this excellent survey paper that appeared earlier this year in JMLR. We consider the setting where we compute an expected utility with respect to a distribution P, which has distributional parameters theta. Previously, we already looked at ways to compute expected utilities. Now we look at the problem of computing gradients of the expected utility with respect to the distributional parameters theta. The gradient characterizes the sensitivity of the utility function to the distributional parameters, or it can also be used for optimization when we train machine learning models. Gradients of expected utilities appear in many places in machine learning. For example, when we look at variational inference, we compute the gradient of the evidence lower bound with respect to variational parameters. The evidence lower bound itself is an expectation of a log likelihood minus a log ratio, and the expectation is taken with respect to the variational distribution Q. In reinforcement learning, we compute the gradient of an expected long-term reward with respect to policy parameters theta. Here the expectation is taken with respect to the distribution over trajectories of states x and actions u. If we can compute the expectation, or an approximation thereof, analytically, we may be able to use the chain rule to get the gradient. But otherwise, for example, if we need any kind of sampling to compute the expected value, or if we want to do mini-batching, we need to compute gradients of a stochastic estimator. And this is what I want to focus on today. The gradient of the expected utility is the gradient of the integral of a utility function u times p of x dx, where p has distributional parameters theta. There are basically two things we can do. We can compute derivatives of measures, which means we directly differentiate the measure p with respect to theta. This gives rise to two categories of gradient estimators, score function and measure-valued gradient estimators. Alternatively, we can compute derivatives of paths. Here we would differentiate through the path the parameters take from a latent variable via x to u. This gives rise to pathwise gradient estimators. If you have heard of reparameterization gradients, that's an example of a pathwise gradient estimator. We'll have a closer look at score function gradient estimators and pathwise gradient estimators in the following. The repeating pattern we'll see is that we'll swap the order of differentiation and expectation. That means instead of computing a gradient of a stochastic quantity, the expected value, we compute gradients of deterministic quantities and subsequently use Monte Carlo integration to compute the expectation. Let's get started with the score function gradient estimator. The key idea behind score function gradient estimators is to use the log derivative trick to turn the gradient of an expectation into an expectation of a gradient. That means swap the order of integration and differentiation. The log derivative trick works as follows. The derivative of a log distribution with respect to its distributional parameters, which is also called the score, is given by the gradient of the distribution divided by the distribution itself. And then it immediately follows that the gradient of a distribution with respect to its distribution parameters is given by the distribution times the score. Now we are ready to derive the score function gradient estimator. We are interested in computing the gradient of an expected utility. So we first write the expectation as an integral. Then we move the gradient inside the integral. Now we apply the log derivative trick to write the gradient of p as p times the score. And in the final step, we rewrite this integral as an expectation of the utility times the score. To summarize, we have now written the gradient of the expected utility as an expected value of the utility times the score. That means that we can use Monte Carlo integration to get the gradient. Here we sample from P, plug the samples into the expression in the expected value, that means the utility times the score, sum up and divide by the number of samples. And this is now the score function gradient estimator. Let's have a look at some properties of the score function gradient estimator. 
we can use a single sample to get an unbiased estimator of a gradient. And there are also no restrictions on the utility function. For example, the utility function can be non-differentiable. However, the distribution p must be differentiable with respect to theta. We also require that it's easy to sample from p for Monte Carlo estimation. In practice, we need to use some techniques to reduce the variance of the estimator. In a reinforcement learning setting, a concrete example of a score function gradient estimator is used in the reinforce algorithm that computes gradients of an expected long-term reward with respect to the parameters of a stochastic policy. The expectation is taken with respect to the distribution over trajectories. If we make a Markov assumption, that means the state at time t plus 1 only depends on the state action pair at time t and some noise, then the distribution over trajectories factorizes like this. Here with the distribution of the initial state p of x0 and a product over time steps where we multiply the stochastic policy with the state transition. From the general score function gradient estimator we derived a few minutes ago, we know that the gradient of the expected utility is the expected utility weighted score. We now plug in the explicit equation for the trajectory distribution that was the initial state times the product over all time steps of the state transitions times the policy. Then we take the logarithm and that gives us the log initial state plus the sum of log state transitions plus the log policy. That's this expression over here. So this is just the log probability of the um, trajectory. Because we only want the gradient with respect to the policy parameters theta, these terms here, so the log state transition and the log initial state, vanish. And we end up with the sum of the gradient of the log policy distributions. The Markov property allows us to simplify the score that involves trajectories into a sum of scores that involve actions at each time step. The expectation is typically computed using Monte Carlo integration, where we sample trajectories either from the environment or using a learned model of the transition. That means we can use the reinforced gradient in model-free and model-based settings. Score function estimators are widely used, not only in reinforcement learning, so we just saw an example of that, but also, for example, in variational inference, discrete event systems or computational finance. Now let's have a look at pathwise gradient estimators as an alternative approach to stochastic gradient estimation. We start again with a general setting where we are interested in the gradient of an expected utility. But now we make some additional assumptions. Specifically, we assume that we can generate data x by a deterministic transformation of a latent variable z whose distribution has no tunable parameters. In that case, the distributional parameters are the parameters of the path f. And to compute gradients, we need to push gradients through the path using the chain rule. For the pathwise gradient estimator, we exploit the change of variables trick to turn the gradient of an expectation into an expectation of a gradient. And here's how we get there. We start again by writing out the expectation as an integration problem with respect to x. Next, we change integration variables from x to z. And then we move the gradient inside the integral. And finally, we write the integral again as an expectation, but now with respect to z, not with respect to x. To summarize, we have turned the gradient of an expectation with respect to x into an expectation of a deterministic gradient but the expectation is now taken with respect to the parameter free distribution of z. That also means that we have effectively pushed the distributional parameters inside the utility function. As previously, we can now estimate the gradient using Monte Carlo, where we sample from the z distribution, push the samples through the path f, and then compute the gradient of the utility function of the transformed samples. We can even simplify the gradient of the utility function with respect to theta by using the chain rule. It's the gradient of the utility function with respect to x 
times the gradient of f with respect to theta. As for the score function gradient estimator, we can use a single sample to get an unbiased estimate of the gradient. However, now the utility function must be differentiable and the path must also be differentiable. The thing that is nice here is that we only need to be able to sample from p of z, but not from the data distribution. We don't even need to know the data distribution explicitly. The pathwise gradient estimator is often preferred to the score function gradient estimator because it's often a lower variance estimator. There are also techniques to control the variance of this estimator. For example, we can control the variability of the path to control the variance of the estimator. Here's an example where the pathwise gradient estimator is used in a Bayesian optimization setting. In the inner loop of Bayesian optimization, we are asking the question where to evaluate next or which experiment to run next. The added value of a new experiment is measured by an acquisition function and we are interested in finding the best experimental design theta that maximizes an acquisition function. It turns out that many acquisition functions can be written as expected utilities of this form and the expectation is taken with respect to a multivariate Gaussian. Because of this, we are exactly in the setting we've been discussing today, compute gradients, in this case for optimization, of an expected utility. For many acquisition functions, we can define a path from a standard normal distribution to data y so that we can use pathwise gradient estimators. Here's an overview of what the expected utilities and the corresponding paths look like for a range of acquisition functions. In all cases, we turn an expected value over y into an expected value over z, where z is a standard normal distribution. We also have to define a path that takes us from z to y. For example, in the case of expected improvement, we can write y as mu plus lz, where mu is the mean of y and l is the Koleski factor of the covariance matrix of y. There are quite a few application areas of pathwise gradient estimators. We already discussed Bayesian optimization, but these gradients are also used in normalizing flows, variation autoencoders, generative models, reinforcement learning, and probabilistic programming. Let's summarize. We started by looking at the problem of computing gradients of an expected utility. We focus on stochastic gradient estimators for the setting where the expected utility is estimated using Monte Carlo. The key idea behind stochastic gradient estimators is to swap the order of integration and differentiation. That means instead of computing the gradient of a stochastic expectation, we compute a stochastic expectation of deterministic gradients. This allows us to use Monte Carlo methods to compute gradients. We looked specifically at two gradient estimators. The score function gradient estimator, which uses the log derivative trick to swap integration and differentiation, and the pathwise gradient estimator, which defines a parameterized path from a latent variable to the data. Both gradient estimators are widely applicable. This concludes this brief overview of stochastic gradient estimators and it gets us over the slopes of expectation back to our starting point of our adventure trip. We hope you enjoyed this adventure trip as much as we did.